South Africa is in the running to host the construction of the world's most powerful radio telescope. The Square Kilometre Array is expected to cost about 1.5 billion euro. Joining us now on uh, the project's economic significance for the country is Dr. Bernie Fanaroff, Director of the Square Kilometre Array project. Thanks so much for your time. Thank we you. keep on hearing about it. Everybody's banging on about it. What is the Square Kilometre Array? It will be the world's largest telescope. Yeah. It's a radio telescope, so it picks up radio waves from the universe. And it will be powerful enough to see right back to before the very first stars formed in the universe 14,000 million years ago. I mean, other than something that maybe astronomers are fascinated about, why is this of any use to my life, to the rest of South Africa? Well, the science it does is very exciting. So it attracts young people into science and into engineering. And it also attracts some of the best researchers internationally to either work in South Africa or collaborate with our universities. Mm -hmm. Technologically, astronomers are always pushing the boundaries of technology. They want to see things which are very faint and very far away. So they push the boundaries of technology. So we're developing a group of young people who've got very high level world class skills in technologies which are not only for astronomy, they're also very important for the future of this country and the world. So things like wireless technology, right. very fast computing and so on. All right, and to that extent then, uh, that's how it's relevant to the broader economy at large? Yes, also that it has a potential to help to change the image of Africa, the way people perceive Africa. Mm -hmm. Most people don't perceive Africa as a place where you do very high level that's science and technology and we want to help develop a vision of South Africa in particular, but Africa in general, as being a place where you can do those things. Some people would argue, you know what, South Africa at the moment's got pressing social needs. There's poverty issues, there are educational issues, healthcare issues, housing issues. This would just be a very lofty uh, project to pursue, particularly at a cost of 1.5 billion euro. We need to get our priorities straight, and this doesn't seem like a priority. Well, first of all, one and a half billion euros won't come from us. It will come from an international consortium. There are already nine countries signed up and another five or six have, intent have stated that they want to sign up. So most of the money would be coming from other countries. Secondly, as you correctly say, we have immense problems of poverty and inequality, which we have to deal with. But we also need a longer term vision for where we're going. There are lots of new industries developing in the world, a lot of them around ITC. Those are going to be dominant in world trade. We can make a choice. We can either marginalize ourselves from that future global economy, or we can develop the skills and the capabilities right. that we can play in that economy and play a leading role in that economy. Well, effectively, it's a contest right now between South Africa and Australia. What does South Africa have to leverage? What have we already done to demonstrate capacity? We certainly have the will, but what do we have as the building blocks? We've got a very good site. It's far away from people, which is what you want, but it's got good infrastructure. The cost structures are very good to build in South Africa and in Africa. We built the first part of the Meerkat telescope. That's a smaller version of the Square Kilometre Array, and we did that for a number of reasons. We wanted to build up a program where we could attract young people, and we've given out since 2005 nearly 300 bursaries, uh, many of them from our other African uh, partner countries. So the Meerkat telescope has helped us to change the perception that you can't do this kind of thing in Africa and it's really improved the way people see us. Right. You talk about uh, drawing some human capital from partner countries. Which are those partner countries? Because many would also be asking how would this benefit the rest of the continent and if not the continent, at least the sub-region of southern Africa. We're working with eight other African countries, Namibia, Botswana, Mozambique, Mauritius, Zambia, Madagascar, Kenya and Ghana. Many of the students who've come here as part of our program have gone back to those countries. So for the first time now, you have astronomy being taught in Kenya, in Madagascar, in Mozambique, in Botswana, starting in Ghana and Zambia now. So you bring young people into science and engineering in those countries. But it's also an iconic project. It's the world's largest science infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So it raises the profile of science and technology as an issue in the development of Africa. Science and technology are an issue for development and governments are recognizing that. The Ghanaian government right. we're working with now, 
Vodafone has donated a 30 meter satellite dish right. which we're converting for astronomy with the Ghanaian government. The Ghanaian government's very excited about that because they say science and technology are important for their development. I mean, you did say earlier on, I mean, it develops uh, a heightened level of scientific skill and awareness and could advance the growth of uh, industries like ICT by way of research capacity. Yep. South Africa right now just needs jobs. When you build a site, if we are granted the rights to build this SKA, in the areas around, what sort of cottage industries would emerge? Because we can't be talking about things that may happen in 10 years' time. Sure. We also need tangibles today. Sure. Well, with the Meerkat telescope, for instance, we've created jobs in construction, in service industries around the small towns in the Karoo. We're creating jobs in industry in the Western Cape primarily, but in other parts of the country which are providing services to us, building radio receivers, making printed circuit boards and so on. So we are creating jobs now. Mm -hmm. If the square kilometre array comes here, there'll be a lot more jobs in construction. There'll be a lot more jobs in maintenance, in operations, mm -hmm. in servicing, and then of course in, in building things like yeah. electronics.